Hello friends, today we are going to talk about subject why is it hard for Chinese women to find a husband. Many people wonder there are more single men than single women in China. But why is it still hard for Chinese women to find a husband? Today we are going to explain it. I cannot explain everything, but I can only explain it from my experience and my observation about the people around me. So we don't represent all the people, but we already represent a big group of people. Now we're talking about this group of people, women, young women, who come from ordinary family and at the age of late 20 and more than 30. And we live in city, we have stable job and financially independent and quite quite good condition already compared to many other people and so we have beautiful mind. Okay, for this group of people, you know, this, the situation is very serious, severe, that out of 10 of my friends around me, five are still single. So why? It's hard. The, simply speaking, the reason is that, first of all, we work too much. We have no time. And second of all, our circle of socialization is very limited. We have no opportunity to meet people. And third of all, we still have hope that we can find the true love of one day. And we don't want only to marry somebody like more or less okay to find the, to find the economic support or baby, baby making, a baby producing machine or a roommate. So we, we want to find a good quality husband and have a happy family life. So. Let me explain more. Let's first take a look at the, the main ways how we can meet a potential husband. First one is through work. You know, we can meet a lot of people in work. And second one, family introduced to us some people they think match. So the first method to meet somebody in the work, the truth is that in the working place, most of the high quality men, they are already occupied. And the rest of people, we see them every day and we know what they're capable of and wouldn't want them to be our boyfriend or husband. So we really have very limited choice. And after the whole day's working, we're very tired. Most frequently we have to work until seven, eight or nine o'clock in the evening. So we're really tired and we have no time to socialize. And this is, well, many times we have to work on Saturday and Sunday. If we have time for us, then we will have a rest and we'll spend some time with family. And we'll go with friends to cinema, restaurant, something, something like, like that. And we only hang out with the people we know. So we really have no opportunity to meet new guys. So I think the best way is to meet somebody in university where there are a lot of activities and you can meet a lot of students. For example, I like to play ping pong in university and I met a lot of new guys there, but unfortunately I didn't find my boyfriend. So, so it turns out this, this method is not perfectly efficient. Well, the next, the, the, the second method, family introduced. Well, young people are quite uh, reluctant with this method because we don't want parents to interfere with our affair and they give us too much pressure. And if we go to a blind date with the intention to find a husband and make us wonder to doubt whether it is true love or not, right? Well, I have experience of, you know, my parents say they try to introduce the son of the colleague of of my father and you know one guy i i yeah we we started our contact with my friends on wechat which is a chinese facebook and we said hello to each other he said hello and i said hello and boom it's nothing anymore it's no continuation so just people have their own thoughts it's interesting and there is another guy yeah we start to contact with each other and it Turns out that we start a pure friendship. <laughs> we become friends in the end. 
Well, you know, well, many people are willing to try this method, at, at least it's an opportunity, right? And my, my cousin, well, the family also tried to find her a lot of candidates, but he, she doesn't like any of them. She thinks she deserves better. So here comes the question, what are the better person? Who are they? Um, on earth, what are our expectations? of our future husband. So I prepared a list for you. Here on this list, I write all the standard criteria that I hope that my future husband would have as a qualified husband. This, this criteria is not only mine, it's where, um, widely accepted in China for young people and their families. So the, there are two parts of this criterion. The first part is the basic conditions which help us to have a quick selection which one we don't like. Right. So first of all, the looking part. He cannot be too ugly, he cannot be too short. It's very important. And if he's very handsome, then, then other points is not that important anymore. And handsome is very important. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> anyway, he cannot be too ugly. What people say, in the future, if you have no love anymore between you and your husband, at least he look good and you don't have to suffer for this. Okay. And second, the financial condition. This guy, he cannot be too poor and he has a decent job. If he has a good position in the career, if he has a car, has the apartment, then they, these are advantages, you know, give a good impression. And third, education match. For example, if I have a master degree and I hope that my husband would have a master degree or above, or at least he cannot, um, at least he has to graduate from university. And if I have experience of living abroad for some time and I hope my husband also have the same experience, so it's match. And uh, the fourth one, family. Are the family reasonable? Are they well? Uh, are they easy to get along with? Well, it's, I think it's a well known in Western world that if a guy married a Chinese woman, then actually it's married her family. So, so here comes that if you, if, um, if the family is not easy to get along with, then your, your marriage life will not be very happy. So. <clears throat> Okay, so there are two kind of guys that we don't want at all. Uh, not at all, but you know, better to do not have. The first one is the mommy's boy. It means that this boy always listens to his mother and he always thinks his mother is right. So for example, if the mother and his wife has a quarrel, then he will support the mother. Then this is not good, right? The second kind of guy is Finnish guy. In Chinese, we say that um, <coughs> this Finnish guy is that he grew up in poor in countryside and uh, has succeeded later in city. So because um, you know we are afraid that the different background and habit will cause problems, so it's better to avoid. Now we go to the further selection part, the second level. In second level, the first one that we have to share similar opinions for life and we have to enjoy talking between each other, you know, it's a communication part. And second, he has to be motivational and diligent, you know, he doesn't have to be rich, but he must have a potential and ability to achieve a great success in the future in Korea. This is important uh, in, the, in the eyes of you know, traditional opinion. And third, responsible and respect women. Those people who think that doing the housework and uh, taking care of children are women's business, then this kind of guy we don't want at all. Okay. Fourth, he has to be kind and optimistic. These are also very important. And for me personally, I, I add the last two points. Fifth is that and he, but and he loves sports, all kinds of sports, and it's even better if he has well-shaped body, <laughs> muscles. And the last one, he cannot be too stupid because I am because I'm smart. 
and he cannot be too smart in a way that um, he calculates too much in relationship. Why don't like this? Okay. Oh my god, it's already a lot of criteria. That it's no wonder I cannot find a boyfriend in China. If I haven't been to Europe, I haven't met a husband in, from Poland, then I now I could just left alone in China, be alone, be lonely and, and rotten there. Right? It's horrible. <laughs> and your current husband, I understand he fulfills all the conditions from the list, yes? I believe so, hopefully. <laughs> or maybe the list li looks a little bit different. Yeah, that's that's the point. That if you look because I know I know one Europe. I know one condition which cancels all the conditions on your list. What cancel? Cancel. If the husband is a foreigner, then anything else doesn't matter. I think foreigners, then then you have to change all this of this list, right? <laughs> so what is the more important? Or what? I know what I'm talking about. You know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Up to now, I'm quite satisfied with you. <laughs> Alright, so, so anyway, <clears throat> the thing is that um, um, even even though you find a even though you find a boyfriend that you like, then I, I think if you find a person you like, then you will not use this list to, to check whether he fulfills everything, right? I because people are blind in love. <laughs> um, okay, come back to China. So even you find a person you like. But from boyfriend to husband, there are still a long way to go. And there are a lot of obstacles. No. Half of the women, their decisions are influenced by the opinion of their parents. So, and, and the parents, they can always find a reason to dislike the person you like. For example, my parents, they don't like the idea that I moved to Europe. Think that's too far away. So to give an example, that the person they know, who a girl who married a Chinese guy in North America, and then the marriage end up very badly. It turns out that the husband is not a good husband, and then they divorce, and she came back to China. So they think this is a very sad story, and which proves that it's very dangerous outside China. So they try so hard to convince me that this is a bad idea. <laughs> so parents say they, they really they can find thousands of reasons to to doubt your decision. Yeah. Yeah, and then I know another example, you know, a couple, they almost, you know, get married. But before marriage they the guy meet the family of the girls and they and the guy they, they didn't reach agreement how much the guy should pay for the family of the girls. You know, it's a tradition that in China, you know, the, the groom will pay some bright price to the girl's family as a betrothal, as a, it's, it's tradition. So apparently that the girl's family asked too much, the guy doesn't want to think it's ridiculous, then they break up. So mm. it's a sad story. So. So, so there are a lot of obstacles. I'm curious. Now you explain all the expectations what Chinese women have, and you claim that this might be the reason why it's hard for Chinese women to find a husband. Yeah. Now, do you think a Chinese man have a certain list of expectations towards a future wife as well? I think this subject is worth discussing for another episode. This is very think, interesting. Do you think it might, it is possible that one of the more important points? On this expectation of the men in China is for the Chinese women to not have this type of a silly list silly? of expectations. I believe they have the same similar list. You know, you have to know. Maybe it's famous already all over the world that the parents are more eager to 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 marry the girl or the has uh, the, or the boys. You know, how to say it, to create the whole sentence. Parents are more eager to find a husband for their daughters and or find a wife for their son. son. Yeah, and then it's very you know popular in, in China, Beijing, Shanghai, and they on Saturday, Sunday they go to some garden to have a blind date themselves. 
represent the the parents' home. Daughter and yeah, the parents go there and they print the the print the description of their children and write how she look like and what the background education working place blah 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 and and then go to the garden and meet with other parents and they see the what kind can match and they talk to each other <laughs> and then okay let's let's exchange exchange uh, contact and then that this is a like blind exchange the children yeah <laughs> yeah it's a blind they do of the parents for their children if we have a chance in the future we'll go to China and show you this hmm. yeah this is very interesting I have never I my parents have never done it you don't know I think I do know <laughs> But I would like to see how crazy our parents are <laughs> in the park. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have other questions? Mm. Well, I think that uh, most of the girls in China, they really want to have um, find a husband. Yeah. yeah. Do you but, think but, that, <laughs> that in general, we talk about Chinese women right now, but it's the same about the men. But let's talk about the women. I think yeah. that Chinese women, they are aware and prepare for for the possibility and scenario that actually not only meeting but even married marrying somebody is just the beginning of the road and there's a lot of work to do to really create a good relationship because it looks like they have a lot of expectations and they hope that they will find a ready person and they will be just happy but yes, i don't right. think it works like this yeah. even even, I even think the most important part is looking for the right guy and after there will, there will be no, not much. You know. I mean, there could be some problem, but if they make a good choice, then the problem later can be easily solved. You know? Yeah. So they pretty much are not prepared. They are not prepared. They are not prepared. Yeah, they when, when they enter the marriages, they will realize that, oh my God, these are uh, mountains of difficulties. In, in the marriage, and they, they, not, they hope that they can eliminate the big part of mm. you know before they, when they make a choice. Mm. Okay. And they hope that if they they can find somebody who share the similar ideas and habit, to, you know, avoid a lot of problem already, right? Are there many divorces in China? More and more recently. Recently. And how about the children? Children. Well, parents don't divorce because of a children. But are there more and children or less children lately? Less children. Right. No. <laughs> what do you, you think that be, because because the family uh, marriage problem, they have less children? No, nah, because many things. But it's interesting anyway. Yeah, maybe one of them. So in the end, although many women want to find a husband, but they cannot immediately find one, a good one. So they, they try to, you know, treat themselves better and at the same time waiting for the guy. You know, I have a friend who, she go to work, but every day don't care, doesn't care too much how she look. But when she travels somewhere, then she has to make up, dress up and be as beautiful as possible. She thinks that that time is for herself. So, you know, that's the spirit, right? <laughs> So she wants to catch something when she goes yeah, travel. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Okay. So yeah. So Chinese young single women. On one hand, we are very desperate. On one hand, we are we have optimistic attitude. <laughs> yeah. One day we will find a husband. Okay. So that's all for today. I hope you like his the content of this video. So. What would be your advice for a Chinese woman which is looking for a husband? What would be the best and fastest way to find a good husband? Go abroad and find a husband from a foreign country. Mm. Yeah, it's a very good advice. Okay. There are a lot of high quality men here. Okay, so see you next time. Bye bye.